SDS provides exciting and comprehensive sporting pathways from participation through to performance for children, athletes and players with a disability in Scotland. To do this successfully, SDS provides a variety of sporting opportunities in order to engage individuals and ensure their sporting goals are fulfilled. This section of the DVD highlights the main stages involved in this pathway and showcases a number of the dynamic sports available to athletes and players looking to become involved in sport. Wheelchair basketball, wheelchair sport, very dynamic sport, very fast. It's played on the same basketball court as able-bodied basketball and uses the same basket, so 10 feet from the ground. At the club we have players who've had spinal injuries, we have players who are born with their disabilities, for instance, cerebral palsy, spina bifida. We also have amputees that play for the club and able-bodied players as well. Basketball is a fast moving sport and the wheelchair equivalent is just as fast. We find with the younger players, when they come into play for the first time, they're used to using their everyday chairs, which can sometimes be quite cumbersome. When we get them in a basketball chair, they're able to go fast in a straight line, but then also turn very fast. So it's a, quite an exhilarating experience for a wheelchair user to get into a sports wheelchair for the first time. It's a great sport for keeping fit because of the dynamic nature of it. Also because of the inclusive nature of it, I find that it's been a, a really good sport for our club as a, a social um, entity as well. So not just wheelchair users playing one particular sport, able-bodied players playing another sport, because wheelchair basketball brings everyone together. It's just a, a great um, way to have an inclusive club for guys to make friends with you know, a bunch of different people. My name's Robert O'Rock and I play for Lothian Phoenix wheelchair basketball team. Uh, we play in the uh, first division, um, first division north, uh, within Great Britain, and um, I'm also on the development squad for Great Britain. With playing basketball and with uh, uh, taking part in it, my confidence is through the roof. I, I talk in front of uh, groups of people now, and like, um, especially in life as well, I, I go out a lot more. The pathway for us at Lothian Phoenix starts with our under 10 session. So we have a session before our main training session that's specifically aimed at children under 10 years old. From that, we move on to our, our second team. Um, our second team playing the third division of the GBWBA League. And again, that's for new players to the game. So we've got some teenagers in there. Then we have our first team and they play in the first division and that's getting more towards the elite end of the scale. Our top players at our club, the next place on the pathway for them is to go to trials for Great Britain juniors and then trials for Great Britain men's or women's team. My goals in sport, um, definitely play international. I want to play for Great Britain and um, even like go for a medal at some point as well, you know, uh, definitely. The best way to get involved with wheelchair basketball is just to go to the STS website and look for wheelchair basketball there. And on the website, they'll have all the key contacts. Um, so for Lothian Phoenix, they'll have our contact details and also the West the Scotland Basketball Club uh, for people on the other side of the, of the country. Um, they've got those details there as well. Football as a sport is a fantastic way for kids to meet each other because it's a team sport. They can work with each other, they can play with each other, they can learn with each other. It's very important, those things. In addition to that, because it's quite active, they're able to build up their levels of physical activities as they continue through school. The game, it splits really. We can take all sorts of disabilities across a range of spectrum right the way for someone in a wheelchair, someone with cerebral palsy, deaf, visually impaired. We can take them all into the game and at participation level, we're trying our very hardest to ensure that no matter where you are in Scotland, you can access the game at that level. My name is Jonathan Patterson. I play with the football team, the Scottish National Disability Team. Got involved about four years ago now and it's been massive highs. Just really love it to bits and can't believe the progression of the team. I was privileged enough to obviously play with a number of good boys club team before I joined the CP team, but I can't believe how professional this is. Uh, from getting involved to obviously participation and then obviously getting made captain of the team, it's just been a dramatic rise from Dublin to Brazil to Beijing.
People that come and have came and watched this tournament can't believe the size of the pitch we play on and the quality. Like, I'd to, I'd say to all my friends and family at work how how difficult it really is to play against these teams in the size of the park and I think they've now grasped it, how hard it really is for those teams to actually go out there and put a good shoe on and it's very, very difficult and I think we've managed to do that. It's really, really rewarding for us as players to get the day behind us. At the moment, I'm really, really happy playing with the team. I can't, I can't stress enough how, how much this has changed my life, to be honest. I can't believe how privileged I'm in the position to be captain of Scotland. And it doesn't matter what level you are, it doesn't matter what, what it's, it does, you're just so happy to put on the shirt and you're in a privileged position because there's so many people out there. And now it's just a case of Scotland to finish and we've got a competition next year, but Great Britain get together now as well. So hopefully my performance is here and I was captain in Beijing, so hopefully I would like to, like to think I would still be involved to go along to London. And obviously that's the next goal and keep continuing playing with Scotland. What we're trying to do in Scotland at the moment with the Scottish FA and partnership with Scottish Disability Sport is ensure that we have participations around the country, no matter your ability or your disability, that you can step in and enjoy kicking the ball and hopefully have a smile on your face and be enthused about the game. If you've got a bit of talent, we've now got regional centres in place where the coaches work on specialised practices and try to develop their skills, hopefully eventually get them to the level of elite international football. We've not got elite international football across all disabilities currently. We just have an under-19 learned disability team and a cerebral palsy, stroke and acquired brain injury team. But hopefully one day that pathway will exist right the way through. But really the message is, if there's a kid in a school, you're a student, uh, you're at work, if you enjoy playing the game of football, get in contact and we'll give you the opportunity at the appropriate level and get you enjoying the game. Boccia is a sport that's specifically designed for people with, initially with people with cerebral palsy. It's a throwing game similar to French Bulls or Patank, which is designed for people with really severe disabilities. In terms of the inclusivity of Boccia, it's fantastic because everyone plays from the seated position, so you can have players, able-bodied players, sitting down next to their disabled peers and, and playing a game of Boccia. And it is all about hand-eye coordination, so it helps develop the skills of, of everybody and not just those who have got a disability. And the really good thing is it breaks it down into to four classes in terms of the, the competitive element, where you've got the, the BC4s, who are players who throw, who've got muscular dystrophy. You've got the BC3s, which are the players with cerebral palsy or muscular dystrophy, who ramp, so who don't have the, the ability to throw. And then you've got the BC1s and the BC2s, who are players with cerebral palsy who can throw. If they're more severely affected, they'll be a BC1. If they're slightly less severely affected, they'll be a BC2. My name's Stephen Maguire, and I play Botcher for GB in Scotland. Boccia, no matter what your level of ability is or disability, you're able to compete and compete in a fair level. I've gained mainly the, the physical benefits of it um, through my condition, which is a degenerative condition, that it, it's helped me stabilise my condition quite a lot and maintain it to a certain level where, where life has become easier in general. My name is Peter Maguire, we're at the peak here in Stirling, uh, Scottish Open and I've been playing boccia for five and a half years. My biggest influence in getting into boccia was my brother. You know, he needed a partner to play in the pairs and it was a goal, you know, to be at the top level as a brother and pair, you know, to medal at the Paralympics and the Worlds. My personal highlights um, is obviously just recently with the World Championships. I get individual silver, but I think more pleasing was the pairs we got as a pair, we're second in the world, and we got silver again, just, just losing out to the Paralympic champions. We knocked Portugal off the number one spot along the way, which is always pleasing, but my highlights is having my brother next to me as well, as being number two in the world as a pair, it's really good. Our main goal is London, you know, that's the target now, to achieve that gold medal there. Just go out there and have fun, even, you don't even win an end, just pick up the ball, it's fun. I think boccia is a, a very popular sport because it gives a competitive option for people who have got a severe disability, who are often left out of a lot of sports because they can't compete. So this gives people the, the chance to, to become professional athletes, to travel the world and you know, comp compete for their country, you know, for, that, for the guys at that level. For the, the guys who are just playing it for fun, you know, it's, it's a highly skilled sport, so you've actually got to be very good at it in terms of getting the ball as close to Jack as possible is, is a real challenge. 
you want to get involved in boccia, the um, best thing to do is speak to your local school um, or if you're a teacher at a local school, you know, get in touch with your, your regional disability manager or with Scottish Di Disability Sport directly and we can support you to do that, whether it's lending you equipment, pointing you in the right direction of your local club or getting you along even to see one of our Scottish squad sessions um, or one of our competitions so that way we can give you all the tools you need to get started in the game. Curling has been described as, as many things, primarily bowls on ice or chess on ice. I think probably the actual gameplay is more like bowls where the stones travel in a curve and from chess the tactical point of view. It's primarily a target sport. You're trying to get your stones closer to the middle of a target than your opposition. We have a number of adaptive programmes, primarily wheelchair curling and visually impaired curling. We've tried to keep these as close to the able-bodied game as possible. The only difference with wheelchair curling is that there's no sweepers involved and with the visually impaired curling they have sighted guides on the ice to help them with their lineup and how fast the stone's travelling. Anyone can play curling. We have members of the, the governing body ranging from age 8 to 80 and so the integration aspect of the sport is always there. I first got involved in the sport in 2004. I was always a very keen sports person um, prior to my accident. Unfortunately, at 17, I was involved in a road traffic accident and I became involved and ended up in a wheelchair. But I've always done sport since I was a kid. Sport has been brilliant for me. I mean, I've travelled the whole world competing for Scotland and Great Britain. Um, I've been very fortunate to be involved in four Paralympics games and I've seen lots and met lots of good friends over the years. To get involved in curling it's really easy, all you have to do is go to royalcaledoniancurlingclub.org and there'll be contact details for all our curling clubs and rinks. We've got 24 rinks across Scotland from Inverness in the north to Stranraer in the south. You can also contact Scottish Disability Sport and they'll be able to give you further information. The sport of bowling is, is a really excellent sport. In terms of who bowls is aimed at, it's actually a really inclusive sport and it's open to, to all disability impairment groups right across Scottish disability sports. It's played either indoor or we play outdoor bowls on grass rinks as well. It's a really inclusive sport, a kind of target sport involving a lot of hand-eye coordination for bowlers delivering their bowl as close to a jack ball as is possible. Hurry now, hurry! <laughs> The physically disabled, irrespective of whether they're in a wheelchair or whether they've got their amputees, they can adapt their style to suit bowling. Essentially, when you're bowling, there's one golden rule. If it's wheelchair position or your feet position is in the line of direction that you're going to aim for and your arms follow your feet. That is the basic principle and it is the same when you come to the visually impaired. They have a string down the middle, gives them an idea of the direction where the jack is, and they then position their feet to suit. And their helper at the other end will then tell them exactly how far away the bowl is. It's a very impressive system actually working on the basis of the clock for visually impaired bowlers. My disability and terrible palsy, which I have from birth. The hands have been represented in Scotland three times at international bowls. Um, two world championships and one test match against England. We have a really strong local branch network that deliver bowling opportunities for people, that's carpet bowls and outdoor bowls. They have a really strong identification of athletes, linking athletes into clubs and then streamlining them through into our competition pathway. In terms of mainstream bowls, where we are now finding a lot of our younger bowlers are taking up the sport, there is an extensive education system and delivery of coaching to school-aged children through mainstream governing body, which is excellent, and we now are finding a lot of young bowlers involved in our system who didn't know about disability sport. Once on that pathway then, Scottish Disability Sport's the main body to, to support those athletes and we provide national competitions, we, we coordinate a national squad, we have trials for national squads and we compete in international competitions. We have a number of athletes who, not even six months ago, weren't involved in our programme and are now really pushing for selection for the World Championships this year 
So it's never too late for a player to try and stake a place in the team for Glasgow 2014 and indeed for our World Championship squads which are held every two years, which is really exciting for anyone looking to take up the sport. Disability Bampton, we really tried to keep it pretty much like the original game of Bampton. There are very few changes. It's played with a racket and shuttle. Uh, court stays pretty much the same, either in singles or, or doubles. And the only real variations we have with Disability Bampton is some of the categories play in a half court and the wheelchair players play with a, a slightly lower net. But other than that, it's pretty much the same as you, know, you would see being played at your local recreation centre. My name's Alan Oliver. I currently play Disability Bampton for Scotland. I'm currently relying number five in the singles in the world and currently six for doubles. The disability that I have is cerebral palsy. It's right hemiparesis, which affects all the side of my right hand side of my body. It's lack of muscle movement and lack of muscle strength and therefore affects coordination and everything on my right side. My best sport personal highlights today would be playing in my first ever World Championships in South Korea. Again, that was a wonderful experience, experience an Asian country who's very passionate about badminton and getting to the quarterfinals. The pathway for people that come into the sport, there are lots of new clubs, small clubs, just starting for people with a disability. I mean, the more players we have, the more clubs we can start, but, you know, in a small space of time, we've now got a structure, not just in Scotland, but certainly in, in other parts of the world, where you know, a good player can, can play at a, a national level. Uh, we have tournaments across the UK, and also there's tournaments internationally. And hopefully, not too long in the future, badminton will be a Paralympic sport as well. So for somebody who's keen, if somebody has ability, they have a pathway that can go right through from you know, local stuff right through to international play. The best way to, to get involved with Disability Bound, the first and foremost, is, is to go to, to the governing body. They know all the details. We have a number of clubs already in existence. But one of the things we are looking to do is to try and create new clubs. So we're trying to find new players from different areas. It's one of the funny things. We, we've actually probably got coaches ready to go and work in disability clubs, but can't find the players to work with because it is quite new. So I would suggest go to the governing body first. You know, they'll contact. Uh, Scottish Disability Sport as well, because um, they know all the links, and between the two, they'll find uh, they find the right place for these people to go. But the one thing we don't want to do is is to say, well, just you know, hang on a minute, we'll, there'll be a club along in a minute. You know, we can get people involved straight away. We'll find places for them to go and play, and we'll find coaches as well. My name's Katie Jones. I am the senior coordinator for Paralympic Talent for UK Athletics. Um, this is a parallel success event integrated into the Scottish Championships. This is quite a unique event. It's one of very few um, in Europe and indeed the world where we actually integrate disability events, specifically Paralympic stream events, into mainstream competition. It gives the athletes the opportunity to be involved in high-level competition and also have a full events programme as they would at a major championships. What we're looking to do is make a more appropriate and visual pathway for the athletes to come from grassroots sports, joining an athletics club, getting regular coaching, to then coming into entry-level competition where it's appropriate to their level and progressing on through from this to more elite level competition and then international competition. So it's one of the early stepping stones for the athletes that is integrated um, and part of the Paralympic stream. My name is Clip Martin, I'm from Motherwell in Scotland and my sport is athletics. My best sporting achievement would be winning the London Mini Marathon in 2007 and in 2008 and competing internationally for the first time. My biggest influence in sport was probably Tanya Gray Thompson because she was in like the Paralympics, I was watching her and I was like, yeah, I would like to be like her, getting all those medals. Um, the impact she had on me was she got me in saying, yeah, athletics would be like, instead of going to basketball or 
she decided she made up my mind for me that I was athletics. What we have to offer is a various range of different sports. We have throws, we have jumps, we have endurance, we have sprints, we have something literally for everyone. Everybody shape, everybody type, and it is open to all. Um, in terms of getting involved, it could be at a participation level, it could be um, social level, it could be performance and Im improving performances. So what we're looking at is basically getting um, a better sort of health um, a better way of life, you become more confident. We see the changes in athletes coming into the sport just on a social level. They found something they enjoy doing and they can see their day to day improvements with. So, coming along to athletics gives you that um, opportunity. Sports aimed at everybody and anybody. Um, basically, it's one of the, the few sports um, across the, the board that pretty much we can get everybody in the water. Um, at some level and, and get them involved in our sport, whether it is just that recreational social side of the activity or whether it is where they, they're getting involved with a disability club or a mainstream club and actually looking at the competitive side of swimming as a sport. The overall appeal of the sport is, is down to the, the fact that everybody can get in there and do it, whether it's a wheelchair user, an amputee, somebody with a visual impairment, a deaf swimmer. In disability swimming, everybody can get involved and get in the water. So I think that's the big sort of appeal to the sport. There's people get that, that sense of freedom in the water that they, they may not get in some other sports that, that are available to them. We've got quite a, a good pathway from the learn to swim schemes right through to our Paralympic athletes. Um, obviously at learn to swim level, it's about getting the guys in the water. Um, really for us it's about identifying them then and, and knowing where they are. From there we'll encourage everybody and anybody to get involved in the competitive side of the sport. Um, SDS offer a great opportunity for everybody um, sort of participation and inclusion level and above so the opportunities there are, are, are fantastic. From there obviously we link into to disability clubs looking for more training opportunities then into mainstream clubs we try and access some more pool time. Um, obviously then we've got the, the the sort of DSE um, championships down in Sheffield for juniors and senior swimmers um, and it it's kind of builds from there through to Paralympic swimming after that. I've been fortunate to have quite a few um, awards and, uh, but my finest, finest achievement's got to be the Paralympic medal. I mean, uh, hopefully it's the first of many. Oh, that experience uh, in Beijing is unbelievable. Being part of a Scotland team or a GB team, you know, you're so proud because you put the t-shirt on and all that, you know, representing your country. But everybody, everybody just gels and gets on so well, and it's a great atmosphere, a great place to be, and everybody's behind each other, you know, supporting each other. That's the best time of my life so far. To get involved in our sport, it's really just get yourself down to the pool, let yourself be known to the guys on poolside, learn to swim, local authorities, and pop down your local disability club, and contact SDS. Um, they, they've got contacts with all the local disability clubs and mainstream clubs. Um, contact myself at Scottish Swimming. Um, if you want to get in the water, we can get you in there and get you swimming, get you competing if that's what you're after. You never know what it's going to take. You might really enjoy it and you might, you might fancy just taking it up or joining a club and taking it step by step. It doesn't matter how disabled you are or how little disabled you are, you know, if, if you want it, you can get it. Wheelchair tennis is very similar to the game of tennis. There are very similar rules. The only rule that is different is that uh, wheelchair tennis has two bounces. We still see the same sort of shots being played, still forehand, still backhand, still serve, still volleys, and we even get wheel faults. We can't even escape that in wheelchair tennis. Wheelchair tennis is only two categories. There's quad tennis and there's the paras. So if it's quad, you're affected in three or more limbs. In the paras, it's just the, the minimum of one or two. Normally what happens in the quad tennis is that uh, some of the players have difficulty in, in, in holding the racket. So we actually see a lot of the players taping the racket to their hand. They have to go through a classifying process and there are a team of classifiers that travel around the world just to do that so that it's consistent in every country. And so you can be playing against somebody with a, a high lesion or with, against an amputee or whatever. So it's just very much open. Um, other than the, the quad category. I got involved in wheelchair tennis um, nine months after an accident that I had when I broke my back in 2001. When I went along to the local club, the, the other players that were there 
uh, encouraged me to keep coming back every week. Um, you know, it was difficult at first to try and fit in because they had been playing for a few years and, you know, I was just taking up the sport. But even just uh, being along at a club and uh, meet, meeting other people who were in wheelchairs and seeing how they coped and seeing what benefits wheelchair sports had given to them. My parents found out about a wheelchair tennis club that they ran in Glasgow, uh, so not far from where I live. Um, so I started going along to that and then I all just kicked off from there really. Uh, the guys there were a good laugh and I was really enjoying it. Um, and then they got me involved in some tournaments and then that's when I got spotted by some people from the Tennis Foundation. My own personal sporting highlights is getting to the Paralympics in Beijing 2008, playing for Great Britain. Uh, that was an amazing experience for me, something I've never felt before. Uh, all my training just now is really building towards London 2012 because it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to play the Paralympics in front of your home crowd. So you really want to make the most of that and be in the best condition possible. It doesn't really matter what level you are involved in, whether it's just to keep yourself fit and, and healthy, whether you just want to try and, and, and compete against other like-minded people or whether you really want to push yourself and see how far you can go in the sport, there should be an opportunity for you. I think wheelchair tennis is a really inspiring sport and uh, it's a sport which pushes the limits of anyone's uh, ability. So, I mean, just get out there and get involved. The range of sports showcase highlights only some of the opportunities available to children, athletes and players looking to engage in sport. If you would like to find out about any other sporting activity and the exciting opportunities SDS provides, then please contact us directly for more information.